Are you looking for an online interactive whiteboard that can replace Zoom so that you only need one teaching tool? Well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a online whiteboard called Hey Hi that's going to take the place of Zoom and put your whiteboard all in one. So, let's get started. Hey there, I'm Sonia Teach. I help teachers to start and grow a profitable online tutoring business. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe. First of all, I want to shout out Hey Hi for sponsoring today's video. So I know you guys have asked me a lot of questions regarding whiteboards in past videos that I have recorded. Um, you've asked me, you know, how can I do a whiteboard session with over 20 students? How can I connect a, a tablet to the whiteboard? How can I, um, you know, control my my students' editing control so that they're not writing while I'm trying to teach the lesson? And thankfully, this whiteboard, Hey Hi, is going to address all of those issues. So make sure that you keep watching. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get to Hey Hi is you're going to want to create an account. I have already done that, I'm already logged in. So I'm just gonna skip that step and you can do that on your own, but I'll have a link in the description for um, how to access Hey Hi. So first of all, once you've created your account, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new meeting. So I'm gonna click new meeting. Um, for the meeting name, I'm just gonna say session with, with student A, because um, this is just an example. It's my personal account. And then you have these different options for the meeting mode. So for most of you, if you're just doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring or small group sessions, all you're gonna need is the classroom mode, which allows you to have up to four students and everyone can see and hear one another. Everyone can interact with each other. If you're, if you're planning to have larger sessions, there are other options in order for you to do that. And ultimately, you can have up to 100 participants in a session um, in like kind of a whiteboard style, uh, webinar style session. So you have all five of these different options. But like I said, for our purposes, we are just going to do a classroom session. So I can go ahead and schedule the meeting or start the meeting. I'm going to schedule it out just to show you how I do this. So say that I'm gonna to wanna to schedule it out for tomorrow. I wanna to schedule it for 11.30 a.m. It's going to be a 60 minute session. And then I have these options here um, for permissions. I can screen lock for all upon entry so that no one is you know, editing the whiteboard as soon as they get in. And I have the option to disable the chat bot for meeting, um, the chat box, sorry. Um, so if I have, you know, 100 people in the session and I don't want them using the chat box, then I can disable that for that purpose. And then I can go ahead and schedule the meeting. And then um, once the meeting has been created, you get a meeting ID and that's going to be um, at the end of this link to access the meeting room. And you also get an access code that is the password that the students need in order to access the room. Um, so they, you want to make sure that they have this passcode, this password. Um, and then what you're going to do in order to go to the meeting is not use this link. This is the link you're going to copy and share with your students, but you don't need to use this link to get into the room. You're just going to click go to meeting. And then once you click go to meeting, it's going to give you the option to write your display name. I write my display name as Sonia because that's what, how I want to be um, um, introduced as. Or if you want to put like, if, you know, if you're a classroom teacher, maybe you want to put, you know, Mrs. Miss So-and-so um, or Mr. So-and-so. Um, so I can put Mrs. Teach and then remembering the access code is the password to enter the meeting, which is the 7826. And then I can go ahead and join the meeting. The first thing that's gonna happen before you join the meeting is it's gonna out ask you the very first time to allow your camera and microphone to be connected to the whiteboard. And I definitely recommend doing that so that people can see you and interact with you while you are in the meeting. So make sure you do that. And it will test and make sure that your microphone and camera are adequately connected. Then we're gonna click next. You're gonna be able to you know, see me um, and show that the microphone is working because of how it's like shifting. And you can see uh, my video as well. Let me click finish.
And now we are on the whiteboard. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself because I'm, I'm going to be using, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not actually in an actual session. So I'm going to mute myself and I'm also going to go ahead and turn off my camera for the time being because I don't really need to have it. Um, but some fun features that you can see is that you can actually increase the video size depending on how many people are in the room or how visible you want yourself to be in the classroom. Um, and then if we go to the bottom navigation, this is what's going to show you everything you need um, for your classroom. Um, the first thing is draw with touch. And this is what I mentioned before about being able to connect a smartphone or tablet to be able to write on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Hey Hype app on your phone, which make sure you have downloaded. And then you are going to press to scan the QR code. You're going to um, go to the QR code on your screen. It will register and then you will be able to have your whiteboard open in front of you while you are um, on your computer. So then you can see from there that you can select a color from the, from, um, or a pencil and you can start writing directly onto the screen, onto your smartphone screen. Um, so right now we're writing one plus one equals two and you can see how that shows up on the computer monitor as well. It's pretty cool. The other options is you have these different colors. There aren't a ton of color options, but I think that's better because if you have too many, way too many color options, what I've noticed is that um, some students can get distracted by them and you know always want to change the color or want to look at all the different options. So you don't want it to become a distraction. So I think the fewer the, the amount of options they have on here is just fine. In my opinion, you can change the um, thickness of the pen. And just to try it out, I can say hello. And then of course I can change the color and I could, you know, just do that. You have a highlighter if you want to highlight something. If I want to highlight that hello, I have a laser pointer if I want to direct attention to a part of the screen and I can um, press and hold it and it will turn red. Um, I have my eraser if I just want to, you know, erase something on the screen. Um, I have an option to draw shapes on here. Um, I can draw a rectangle um, and I can lock it so that no one can move it. And you can see that the whiteboard is expandable. It, it's, it's pretty large and you, you can either keep it just as one area or you can move to other parts of the whiteboard and have different sections of your lesson there. Um, there is the text feature if I want to just write something down. This works well for me because my handwriting is somewhat sloppy. So if I can just use the text, then that is very helpful. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up another board and you can you can create as many as you like over here. And I'm going to go to insert image slash document. And that allows me to upload something from my computer or I can, um, you know, take a screenshot of something online and paste it onto here as well. So we're going to go to insert document. And if you have some things that you um, have on your computer that you'd like to teach, I have these. Um, multiplication problems that I got from mathaids.com and I'm going to I can decide which ones I want to upload I think the second page is the answers so I'm not going to upload that um, well I guess I could do an image per screen and then we can go through the answers then so um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert and it's come out a slightly bigger than I want it to be so that's totally fine um, I can make it a little bit smaller and I can just basically manipulate it the way that I want it to be. I don't really need to show the name and everything. Um, so then what I would like to do is I want to just lock it to the screen so that it's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to shift around the paper anymore. I can shift around the whiteboard um, as we've seen previously, but I'm not going to be able to shift around the paper. And then um, if there is another student in the room, they can go ahead and, um, you know, start answering the questions and they can annotate directly um, on here. Or if they're not comfortable with their 
writing or using you know their tablet they can obviously use the text feature and just type in their answer over there um, so they have some different options for that um, and then there is the undo button if I you know make an error I want to go back and in addition to the undo button, if you go to the three dots up here, this is a really unique feature that I haven't seen from any other whiteboard before, but you have the option to restore screen. And if you're familiar with Google Drive, it's kind of like your revision history. So if you look at restore screen, um, it's going to bring up um, all the previous versions of the whiteboard that you've had. Um, and from five hours ago to 17 seconds ago, I can restore on board. I'm not going to do that now, um, but I just wanted to show you that that action is possible for you. Um, you can also, if you'd like, you can clear the board, but that's not that's not reversible. So I would recommend not doing that unless you absolutely are comfortable clearing everything. Um, you can always create a new board over here, so there's not any reason to like completely delete everything um, unless things you know get out of hand <laughs> with your students. And that being said. Um, there are actually ways to control the editing features of the guests in the room. So if you go to your guest settings, I can turn off the um, guest ability to edit. Um, I can uh, turn off their ability to speak. I could turn off their webcams. I could turn off their chat ability. So that way I'm restricting what they're doing if I want to teach a lesson first and then after I'm t I've taught the lesson, I can go ahead and turn these features back on so that they could all talk and interact with each other. Um, and I can invite guests here as well. So there's a lot of options there. I know that some of you have in the past when I've done whiteboard tutorials, you've been concerned about the fact that you can't control the get the students editing control. Um, so in this whiteboard, you can you can turn off their editing control temporarily, you can turn it back on so that you're able to teach your lesson without worrying about um, students coming on and drawing all over the place or, you know, wreaking havoc. Um, so that's a nice feature as well. Um, there, There's also a share screen option like you would have in your typical Zoom video call session, um, which is nice to have. You um, can also do something cool, which is to have a library. Um, I can have a library of all my multiplication worksheets so that I can refer to it later and upload them to the screen later. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of my files. I'm going to click here, add these multiplication, oops, add these two multiplication worksheets, and now I can refer to them later. Um, insert image and insert document, and then I can go over here. Um, and upload from there, from that library. I can literally just upload it um, and have it open right there. So that is a pretty cool feature so that you're able to store um, worksheets and files that you need to refer to later. Um, and you also have your chat box, any files you wanna share with the students in the session, if you wanna share that specific lesson that you're doing. Um, and then you have the option to create polls, which is pretty cool if they're if you're asking them, how do you multiply fractions? And then you can have different options for them and create that. Those are some of the features of Hey Hi. There's so much more that I'd love to show you, but it would be hard to fit into one single video. And I want you to go ahead and go and create your own free account on Hey Hi. Like I said, you can use all of these features on the free plan. Um, the only restriction is that you're limited to a 40 minute session, but that gives you so much freedom and so many options that you don't necessarily get on other whiteboards. So I really encourage you to create a free account, check it out, see what you think. And I'd love for you to tell me in the comments below what your favorite feature of Hey Hi was that I touched on during this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Bye.